of Bitch Talk, booze and interviews straight from the heart of San Francisco. I'm Erin. That's Anne. Hi. Char is uh, sipping her draft cider right now. And uh, we are at the first, uh, that's what she said, of 2020. Yes. And um, the co-founder of That's What She Said, uh, and also a former guest of Bitch Talk, Morgan Scheidler, is here tonight presenting her Hustle and Play workbook, um, which I uh, donated to her Kickstarter in 2019. And I really wanted one of these last year and realized halfway through the year that it's really not going to help me because it's a year planner. So I was super stoked to get this year's. I need to get my ass organized as fuck because there's a lot going on with Bitch Talk. Um, so we're excited to see what she has tonight. Uh, oh, by the way, you can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com. You can also find us every Monday morning from 6 to 6.30 on BFF.FM. We were at the Coven Film Festival, second annual, over the weekend. We had the best weekend. We did. It was really good. It, it was, was very really, heartfelt. And the, the, the great thing about the Coven Film Festival is it's, it's still young. Yes. So everybody is just really supportive and really excited to be there and be part of this thing that's just growing exponentially every year. Right. Um, so this is going to be a two-part podcast a twofer. series. Yeah, twofer, if you will. And There were uh, too many bad bitches for us to speak to. We couldn't stop. It's true. We couldn't help ourselves. It's <laughs> true. It could have been like a Sundance where we would have had like at least a month's worth, I think, of Oh, easy. Content. And and uh, by, by the closing night ceremony, we, we set up like three future interviews to do because we're like, yeah, sorry, actually, we ran out of time. But <laughs> So I, I just want to say for the record, 2020, um, we're thinking forward for content and we're already full for January. So now we're booking out February, March. I actually have a March contact too. From the other event we were at over the weekend, Story San Francisco's Love Letters to the City. Oh, yeah, we did so that, too. That was we, were, uh, we were hustling for Sundance and, and supporting Storied SF, the podcast. Yeah. I mean, if we, if we wanted to, we could easily get ourselves already done through, like, March. Well, <laughs> I think we could be done through half the year with Sundance coming up, oh, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, if we, if we just started rolling out Sundance stuff right, right away. Yeah. I mean... See, see you guys in 2021. <laughs> Basically. I'm just going to get myself organized for the year, so I'm ready for next year. But um, Yeah, we're hitting you with a bang, though. This week we have three episode, episodes for that ass, back to back to back. Yes, for that ass. Um, we also, for that ass, have a fundraiser this Sunday on the mm-hmm. 19th. For our asses. For mainly. our asses, for your ass. It's uh, going to be here at the social study where we are right now, for that's what she said. And um, it starts at 5 p.m., We'll have a signature Bitch Talk cocktail, which Ange has to come up with the name for. And uh, we have raffle prizes from uh, a lot of our friends of the show. You know, people named W. Kamau Bell, Lyrics Born, um, our friends at Fleetwood, San Francisco, and our friend Jackie from Moon Looms. And, oh, Story San Francisco is throwing in a couple things, too. So um, Come toast with us. We're yeah. about to head to Sundance. And, uh, it's Just gonna get a be, drink. And, you know, this year has, uh, has been crazy so far, but we have a, a, a lot of things going on and a lot of things to celebrate. So come, come out and celebrate with us. Yeah. Even, even popping in for a drink is going to help benefit us. Right. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, what and it, just say hi. Yeah, Harmony's Harmony's making a specific drink just just for us, right? Yeah, that's awesome. I don't know what's gonna be called. I have some thoughts. I bet she does. <laughs> I bet she does. <laughs> um, noing, noing, noing. So, without further ado, this is our first set of interviews from the second annual Coven Film Festival. We have the founders, Connie Jo Seacrest. Cameo Wood, former guest and friend of the show, and Farida. Director of programming, Farida Badamosi. Correct. So, uh, oh no, and special, special guest. Oh God, how could we forget this? Yeah. We're, we're capping it off <laughs> with right. not only one of, the, one of the festival's filmmakers, but she also hosted a panel on directing actors. You may have heard from her, of her. Yeah. You probably have, whether you know it or not, her name's Karen Allen. She's been in everything from Animal House to Raiders of the Lost Ark. Scrooge. To the Sandlot. Yeah. To more recent things, but we're old, so that's what we like to reference. (laughs) Yeah, hello. She is, I mean, as we were interviewing her, I was just looking at her face and seeing her in all these films that I grew up watching. Right. So this is a really special episode. Yeah, so enjoy um, our interviews, and we'll see you on the other side. We have one of the founding members of the film festival. Her name's Cameo Wood. 
We've had her on the show before. We love her. So many stories. I, I wish I wish this wasn't just a podcast because of the expressions you're giving us, Cameo. I, I'm trying to I'm, yeah. I'm trying to make all the responsive faces. <laughs> That's a face for the big screen. Um, That's all I'm saying. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, thank you for having us again. This yeah. is so exciting. Your second year, and you guys have grown exponentially. Can you talk about the process for the past year? Of Yeah. Um, so after Coven um, ended, and we had so many great responses, uh, Connie, Joe, and I, um, we were the founders, um, we decided to do it again and this year <laughs> do it three times as big uh-huh. uh, because we really Just I think cause. we were having brand an- brand aneurysms that day so yeah we oh were when like, you made that decision yeah, yeah. cool no we were, I, yeah. I, I know this feeling very also, well also like five coffees it was yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I know that um, yeah. and it turns out three days is not just three times as hard it's way harder anyway so yeah so we did that <laughs> and um but then we were really lucky we got to um partner with the Roxy with Lex Sloan who's um, if you're in the Bay Area and you don't know Lex Sloan, um, I was a latecomer to the um, Lex Sloan fan club. Um, we don't know Lex yet. So, oh, yeah. You so know, Lex. I love the Roxy. So. Oh, yeah. She runs the Roxy and it is, um, yeah, she is doing, she's doing the good work. She's doing the good work. Um, so, yeah, she um, helped us get dates, helped us be in a more central location because mm. um, Japantown was a little off the beaten path. Um, yeah. Harder to get to. Yeah. So, this is much easier to get to. Yeah. Um, yeah, she really supported us a lot. Um, we start, we coordinated with Bay Cat. We got some really great sponsors this year, um, based on the strength of what happened last year. Mm-hmm. So, um, we also, um, decided, well, so last year was heart wrenching and trying to decide, um, who would get into the fest and who would win awards. It was heartbreaking for me because I want everyone to win everything. Um, so this year I hired Farida to be, um, our, or referee, goalie, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's been amazing. And her contacts are extensive because of her um, work with like Frameline and Sundance and Mill Valley. And she's just got all this possible experience. So, which means that now I, um, I get to enjoy the festival more as yeah. opposed to running everything, running everything. Mm-hmm. So yeah, between Farida and Connie Joe, and I have four interns this year from Bennington and Bay cat. Um, I actually have no idea what's happening anymore. That's so it's, okay. it's good. It's that's, good. That's what, what it's like to be the boss actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm bossing can, it. Yeah. Can you talk about the intern program and your interns? Yeah. I love Cause they, interns. we haven't, you met one of them. Yeah. Um, but we haven't really officially gotten in there yet. So talk, talk about them. Uh, yeah, so um, this is my fifth year doing an intern program. Uh, so the first year I just had one in- lonely intern who kind of toiled by themselves. And um, it, you know, and it was fine, but then I realized um, we should always have at least two so they can play together. Yeah. Um, so for the last uh, three years, I've had two interns. And they've, um, so I had two interns uh, my second year. One of them ended up making a film that has actually like been on TV. It's been in India. It was like this massively successful short film. You saw it last year with Celia. Yes. And so, okay. um, so that was our second year intern. Last year, again, we had two interns, um, but they had very ambitious projects. Um, and so I decided this year, I would have four interns. Why not? Um, reduce the size of the projects and have them crew for each other. Oh. So that's what we're doing this year. So this year also, instead of having, you know, sort of building up until we get a crew and a camera, um, this year they're making films every week and they we gave them on their very first weekend an iPhone class and we mm-hmm. gave them iPhone gimbals and all kinds of gear so they can shoot videos every week. Wow. Um, and lenses from Moment, like they, they're shooting anamorphic, etc. So it's kind of changed the game in terms of what they're able to produce. Um, if you want to see them in addition to this, it's uh, charmingstranger.com slash blog and you get to see every movie that they're watching the movies they're making every week and it is amazing they're so talented tamar kiana uh sharissa and irene Mm -hmm. Um, so two from bay cat so they're local interns then two from bennington and they are just the best interns of all time oh i love them yeah i I love that you go back to your alma mater to to pick from from the the uh 
the kids there and I just love how you're so supportive like not only of your interns but of the I mean last night you're going around all the filmmakers and making sure they're okay and you didn't offer me beverage but you offered the filmmakers <laughs> beverages but no but I love I love that that's just the feel of Coven Film Fest and that comes that comes from you obviously you know and and everybody that that you pick for your team so it's just a different feel from other film festivals so we love being here and we're really honored to be here and really excited about the weekend yeah yeah, it's well. I mean, this is um, Coven was always about being filmmaker first, and how do we create the best experience for our filmmakers? And so that's why we have programs and talks that are geared toward filmmakers. That's why we have this VIP lounge with breakfast, lunch, dinner. Uh, but the idea, and also like we we pay for the um, their flights, we pay for their hotels, and it's all about the idea that they are letting us um, show their film. We want to make sure that if they're taking a couple of days off of work. They don't also mm. don't have to pay for everything else in addition. Mm-hmm. Um, we're trying to keep them as secure and safe as we possibly can so that they can enjoy this experience. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, our hope is that when they leave, they're part of this family of Coven, this sisterhood of filmmakers, and that they um, take these good feelings home with them and continue to foster them. And I have to say, I love that you're doing it in San Francisco because it's it's a little bit of an artist's... um, not wasteland, but desert a little bit. So bringing it here and having it here consistently is is fantastic. So it gives us something to talk about, something fantastic to talk about, and it um, it brings these women and creatives here um, to hopefully I don't know spread the word and 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 still talk about San Francisco in an artistic way. So thank you. Don't take it to LA, please. <laughs> please. No, that'll never happen. Don't okay. Worry. <laughs> um, Last question. After last year's success, are there other cities um, or people that are in the film industry asking about how to do this in other places yet? Or having, are you getting those questions at all? Um, I mean, I do have people asking, but, you know, it's, um, it's hard because so much of what we're doing is, you know, it's not profitable. Um, Right. You know, it it relies so much upon just donations Mm -hmm. and stuff that I think um, not everyone has access to um, because San Francisco is a little bit moneyed and people are willing to put money into um, seeing this. Like one of our sponsors, you know, the Phoenix, they are really into the arts and they helped us with some free rooms and discounts. It's amazing. There's a lot of groups that have um, really helped out. So like the space that we're in right now, 518 Valencia, is a um, event space only for nonprofits. Um, So we're, you know, we are existing on a structure that not everyone has. Right. Um, so it's it's kind of hard to replicate mm-hmm. what we're doing if you don't already have, um, you know, the, the finances to back it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it's here. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Cameo. Thank you so much. Cameo would. We'll see you in a all day today, all day tomorrow, and probably the rest of the year, and then next year for the third annual. So I thank sure you. Hope so. Great. <laughs> Thanks. We have one of the co-founders of Coven Film Festival, and I'm so sad that we didn't talk to you last year. But last year was like first round kind of crazy her name's connie jo seacrest yes and um i just know that you're holding it down me and <laughs> and are like she is the hub we totally get it and as soon as we can get her on the mic that'd be great and um just wanted to welcome you on the program yes, and can you. you talk about your involvement with coven film festival yes so um i am one of the co-founders so yeah. i work with with cameo wood yeah. the founder a lot on all of her different film projects um i'm her producer i'm her right hand man right hand woman, woman. <laughs> i was like <laughs> I know. Man, woman yes um so we originally came up with the concept for the film festival to not only help uplift women and non-binary filmmakers but also something that we that can be fun for our interns to do we do an internship program every winter where we bring um, students from Bennington College mm-hmm. and we teach them how to do filmmaking. Um, and it's a wonderful internship program. Yeah. But then it just grew. <laughs> <laughs> as, as those things do. Right. Yeah. Um, and this year we really wanted, we really wanted it to grow bigger and um, of course expand. Last year was very much a marathon we put it together in like two or three months i still don't understand how you did that but you did it it was insane yeah we did it and it was great thank you yeah you're welcome yeah it was very successful so this year we definitely wanted to um spread out you know the events and stuff like that Mm -hmm. to give people more time to breathe and Mm -hmm. we wanted to also incorporate 
more panels and feature films. Yeah. Um, so now our one day short film <laughs> festival has now turned into <laughs> a three day yeah. uh, festival, like full festival. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's amazing how much it's, it's expanded. Yeah. And it's a lot of work, you know, it takes about six to seven months to prep and get everything ready. And then it's like, you got to hit the ground running when the festival starts. Mm-hmm. But it's been great. I'm exhausted, but I mean, it's by like the, that good exhaustion, yeah, you know? Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's a lot happening and it's very exciting. And the, f- um, the films this year are very top notch. I mean, last year they were top notch as well, but it's like, you can tell the evolution of this film mm-hmm. festival. Mm-hmm. So, um, Speaking of, are you already thinking of next year or, you know, do you have little things, notes (laughs) that are happening? Um, I do have notes happening for certain for certain things, because, you know, when you're producing a festival, certain things come up and you're like, oh, I'll take note of that Mm -hmm. for next year that um, we make sure that we test things or make sure things are properly set up. Um, But nothing major has happened this year. Yeah. um, Which is amazing. Yeah. Because you always have like at least one or two hiccups but we were doing really well this year yeah um and how's the roxy been i heard the, they, they've been amazing they have been amazing their space is amazing um and i love how we got this vip lounge right around the corner from mm-hmm. the roxy which makes everything so convenient yeah. for everybody to get to they're not running around town right um which is wonderful um and we've sold out on all of our short film programs Yay! which is it's fantastic uh, amazing yeah Um, but yeah, the Roxy have been very supportive, um, and pushing and promoting the film festival and selling tickets, which which is wonderful. I feel like, um, this festival is very thoughtful about their filmmakers and their press people. Um, I I, seriously, um, we, we do a lot of film festivals and it's not that they aren't thoughtful. I think it's almost like the programming and the festival itself is really thought out, but maybe not the back end of it. So Mm -hmm. someone Mm -hmm. that goes to film festivals, thank you so much for thinking about those things. It's, it, it it makes the difference. Yeah. Me and Cameo have just been to so many festivals. Mm -hmm. And so when we first, you know, started thinking about throwing a festival, we were like, okay, we have to make sure we have these certain things in place for our festival Mm -hmm. to make sure that it's a filmmaker festival. Mm -hmm. We want our filmmakers and our press people and our VIP people and anybody that's coming, like the attendees of the festival, to really enjoy it and not have to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. Um, And just feel like they're taken care of. Yeah. And that's what that's because that's what we want to feel like when we go to a festival. Mm-hmm. Not scrambling. Um, and we've definitely been to some <laughs> festivals, which I won't name. Right. No, um, we that, won't name them. Yeah. That have <laughs> not really paid attention. They don't really care that you're there and they just care that they want to just make money and sell tickets. Well, and they've thought about their donors. They thought about their members, but they haven't thought about the people that are actually giving the content. Yeah. Correct. to that festival so I I recognize that and I, I really thank you guys for thinking about that thank you um so this is just one thing that you do do you mm-hmm. want to talk about <laughs> <laughs> talk about um everything else you do down well, in LA I, where I you're based? never thought I would be a festival producer <laughs> or co-founder of a festival right I never even considered that so now I am and I'm like okay do I want to continue doing this I think I do okay um but I think I'll need more help <laughs> next year because mm-hmm. I feel like I'm a um, I mean besides Cameo and Farida and um, our lovely interns who have helped us out a lot um, being the one producers it's it's hard mm-hmm. um, so I definitely think I want to get a team next year yeah um, for the festival mm-hmm. but besides uh, besides that I, I am also an actress in Los Angeles mm-hmm. and so I'm constantly you know auditioning for um, theater, television, film, and trying to get into that that genre of projects. Um, and then I do producing, film producing on the side. Yeah. So I, I'm a busy woman. I like to keep myself busy. Mm-hmm. I'm the type of person where if I'm sitting at home and I have nothing to do, I, I get really depressed and lonely and sad. And I'm like, oh, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> um, and then... I don't think you have to worry about that, though. I feel like you're pretty busy. 
<laughs> You're a pretty I, busy lady. Well, it comes in waves. Got it. I'll say that for okay. sure. Like, I'll have months where I'm just like running around with my head cut off, and then I'll have months where I'm not doing anything, mm, mm-hmm. and I'll and I go insane. <laughs> Got it. So I do painting oh. on the side. Like oh. I do acrylic like painting, and I've been experimenting with like some other art stuff. And I'm like, okay, if I explore that, maybe I can start selling my paintings and you know have that on the side just in case things are slow. Mm-hmm. Um, but things are really starting to pick up for me in Los Angeles. I've been there for two years now. Mm-hmm. It takes a while. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I produced a short film this summer that mm-hmm. got into a, a, a high top festival that I can't announce yet. Okay. And then I worked on um, an independent television series called Everyone's Doing Great. James Lafferty was the director. I did some line producing, UPM work, and then he also gave me a series regular oh, role on it. Fantastic. Um, or a reoccurring role, which, okay. was, which was fantastic. Yeah. And I feel like that happens to me a lot, where I'm either acting or, or I'm producing, and then they throw me in producing or acting roles because they get to know me and they go, oh, you're a producer too, or oh, you're an actor too. Mm-hmm. And so I get other things because of that. You can wear the hats. I can wear the hats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's useful. <laughs> I think so. I mean, I really think anybody in the entertainment business or, or business in general should learn different aspects of that business and I different agree. roles mm-hmm. because as an actress and then moving into a producing role, I've learned so much, and so when I'm an, when I'm just an actress on set, like I totally understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. Like if people are running around doing things or stuff is happening, I'm like, I get it. Right. You know, it creates empathy. It does. Mm-hmm. It does for other people's jobs. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. I'm on the same page. Um, Connie Joe, where can people find you on the internet if you want them to find you? <laughs> yeah, you can find me at ConnieJoeSecrets.com. Uh-huh. Secrets is S E Christ. That's mm-hmm. how you spell it. It's not how you pronounce it. And I'm not related to Ryan Sequest. <laughs> <laughs> it's Secrets. Right. And Joe is J O, yeah. not J O E. Cool. Um, but yeah, they can find me there. Great. Well, thank, thank you. you so much for this film festival. Thank you for having Bitch Talk. Yes. And we can't wait to see you for the third annual. Yes. In 2021. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't even think about it right now, but I know it'll be fantastic. It will. It's just, it's growing and um, it's just becoming something here in the, in the city, which is lacking the arts. So yes. I really appreciate that. Oh, thank As someone you. who lives here. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I appreciate you being here. Oh, thank you, Connie Joe. Yeah. We'll see you next year. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back to the Coven Film Fest. We are delighted to bring you the magnificent wonderful director of programming Farida Baramosi we've had so many great conversations with you and I'm just so happy to have you on the program so thank you thank you for having me on the program (laughs) (laughs) Uh, can you talk a little bit about what a director of programming is uh, what your role is and what you brought to this festival because you're new to the festival this is your first time yes this is my first year with the festival so a director of programming essentially um, in a more uh, concept definition is they decide on the narrative direction of the festival. Uh, The actual basics are we choose the films. So the director of programming at a festival is usually the person who has the final say when it comes to films. Um, But it's also a job not about just choosing films that you like, it's about choosing films that you think will respond to your audience. And sometimes that means choosing a film that maybe isn't your favorite film, but you know will engage your audience in a way um, that you want them to be engaged. I was going to say, so please talk more about the challenges of doing that work because I'm going to guess you've probably seen how many films in your whole lifetime and you, I don't know what genres you love, which ones you don't love, but um, it's kind of a lot of pressure. Yeah. um, One of the greatest compliments I've actually gotten during this festival has been um, there are so many different genres and so many different types of stories and I've taken that as a compliment. A, because my head's a little crazy and I just love so many different genres. <laughs> but also, like, the goal of programming, depending on a festival and depending on who the director of programming is, to really showcase just what is available and what sort of stories that you can see. And it's really hard to do that. Some of it is, like, hard to do that because it's hard to compare films that are just so vastly different. You can have an animated doc, like Sweet Sweet Kink, or you can have a pseudo Black Mirror uh, sci-fi film like Gemini. Mm-hmm. Um, 
those are two vastly different films and how do you compare them and decide that these are all films that you want at the festival. Um, so like that is one of those things that is hard when you're doing programming. It's just really trying to make sure that you're covering the different things, but also you're not shortchanging a particular film because of a specific genre or your idea of what a good film is. And you've seen um, a lot of festivals in your lifetime. Um, I mean, the obvious about Coven is it's all women, but what are the other things that may not be obvious about this film festival that sets it, sets it apart from other ones? Um, so for us, one of the things that we really enjoy about what Coven is, it's not simply about, oh, look, we have women and non-binary people behind the camera. That was really all it was. For us, it was also fundamentally about showcasing what having a woman or non-binary person behind the camera does for the POV for the film. So while there are films that are like very unique um, to women filmmakers, but there are also films that are stories that we've seen done by men time and time again. Um, like I said, like a science fiction type concept that women don't normally get access to. We have horror film that women don't normally have access to to tell that POV behind the screen. Um, we have films that star women, but we also have films that star men. Like. Um, and we have films that star non-binary people. The goal is to have films really showcase really the female cinematic view or the non-male cinematic view. Just get you, put you in a place where you can see that, see how much the POV of the person behind the camera has been affecting how you see film. Mm -hmm. And uh, as somebody who's a self-proclaimed festival nomad, what is something that you're going to take away from this experience specifically, just from your own growth and from your own personal experience? Um, this has been fantastic because uh, one of the great things about Coven Film Festival is that they fly out their filmmakers, whether they're a short filmmaker or a features filmmaker. And that's been really exciting to see, and we also feed them, and it's been really exciting to see how the filmmakers respond to that and how much they enjoy being in a space where they feel valued. And like that I want to take with me to every festival. Um, Kevin Film Festival does a really good job of like being filmmaker centered. Like trying to create this space for emerging filmmakers in this very, we had a creative distribution panel, which was very honest. Um, a very- Loved that. <laughs> Keeping it real. Uh, <laughs> Kevin Film Fest. <laughs> like it's, it's, we are in very uncertain times when it comes to distribution and when it comes to film and when it comes to independent film. Um, and we are still figuring that out. And as filmmakers, it must be very discouraging to have no real right answers. And we want to still make those filmmakers feel like they are valued. Um, and there's, them telling stories is important. So like that is what I really appreciate about Coven doing that like in a very tangible, physical way. Like, we feed you. <laughs> you are here. <laughs> right. I, I, we were talking to Connie Jo and, earlier, and I just said I'm, I'm really thankful about how thoughtful this film festival is because we've done a few we haven't done as many as you are, have but I mean it is it's very thoughtful so um, what are you seeing for maybe next year I know we talked about this a couple days ago but I mean are there other things that you're feeling thinking I mean you always you, you set a bar you always want to go higher like it's one of right. those things like you never really want to rest on your laurels you want to create this continue creating this space um, for next year, of course, you want to bring out, see if we can bring out more filmmakers or figure out a way to not necessarily bring the filmmakers here, but like we have access to streaming and being like, and if we can get the technology right, we may not be able to bring every filmmaker physically here, but we can bring their voice here mm. and figuring out how we can do more of that, like how we can use this amazing technological advancement that we're in to like bring the filmmakers voice to those screenings so mm -hmm. that at least you get you get to talk to that person, you get to engage with that person, even if they're not physically there. Yeah, we've been talking a lot about the film Farta, and we're like, we're bummed that that filmmaker's not here, but we get it. But if if next year that we can at least talk to them through whatever technology it, we can, exactly. Like we live stream. I mean, we we video call our friends all the time. Like, why can't we bring that sort of technology in a way that's actually functional and doesn't mess up in the middle of screenings? I worked a lot of festivals. Mm -hmm. um, video streaming Q and A's is. It's a lot of work. <laughs> You're always just like standing there crossing your fingers like, please, please. Like, please don't break. <laughs> don't, don't, please. Yeah. So like just getting to a place where we could take that as well and own that and just create a festival that's truly about having the filmmaker's voice be prioritized. One last thing that, that I want to bring up is uh, what I really love about your work as director of programming, specifically when you're doing shorts and blocks of shorts, is you yourself get to express your 
vision and your creativity just from placing them together and they all speak even though they're standalone shorts they all speak together as one thread and, and one story united and that's something really special that you get to do as director of programming specifically for shorts so can you talk about that process because we saw you stressing out yeah. in between <laughs> before during after and you know it's just so beautiful how they play out together as one that's like my favorite thing um uh Sometimes I challenge a person to see what I put as a first film and then what I put as a last film, and they kind of look at me and I was like, "Nope, go on this journey with me." And I think, <laughs> and I think that is one of the. I love feature films. Feature films are fantastic. But one of the great things about programming a shorts package is that you do get to specifically tell a different kind of story when you do so. You go to some festivals and they just kind of throw shorts at you, and some of them are great and some of them are like not great. But some of it, it's not that the shorts not great. It's the way it was placed put it at a disadvantage. The way you're and, watching it. And, yeah. and, and watching it, and you're, you're, you're looking at it through eyes that you know that that's not what the filmmaker wanted. Mm. So when I curate a shorts package, what it's going through my mind is I want the short to be viewed in the very best light possible. Mm. And be able to tell a story. Um, the one thing I joked about when I was talking to one of the filmmakers was like, I feel like I'm the godmother for all the films at the mm -hmm. festival. I feel very strongly about them. And in that <laughs> sense where it's just like, they're not mine, um, but you, like I feel proud of them and I love them. But of course, if something's wrong, I'll give them back to their parents. <laughs> but the idea is like with a shorts package, I really do feel proud of these films. Like I'm so grateful to them. And you really just want to put them in this particular light in which you can really showcase some of the amazingness of this film that sometimes doesn't come across if it's like randomly thrown in there yeah. um, so that I that's probably one of the most joyful experiences for me because I also feel like you get to hear my curatorial voice when I do that totally um, yeah. and like and that's very exciting because I'm also still figuring out my curatorial programming voice like how that looks and like I feel like my shorts are like a really great way for me to explore that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's also been amazing and very like soul affirming whenever someone says that they really like the progression of things. Yeah. Um, Frida, to wrap this up, where can people find you on the internet if you want them to find you? And what do you have coming up next in 2020? So I can be found on Twitter at Too Much Telly. Um, <laughs> yeah, as you, I watched a lot of television growing up Ooh. and I am not British. Um, <laughs> But yes, at Too Much Telly on Twitter. You can just look up my actual name, Frida Badamosi, on Facebook. Okay. Um, and I technically have an Instagram. I do not post very much. I am old. Um, I did find you, though. <laughs> found you. I exist. <laughs> uh, I post every six months. If you catch one of those posts. Oh, sounds fantastic. like my co-host here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, moving on. <laughs> but yeah, so probably Twitter or Facebook. Got it. Uh, I will expand and be a person who uses the interwebs more. Thank you. Talk to her about that, too. <laughs> and then what are you doing the rest of the year? So I am screening for different film festivals. I'm also programming for another women's, women's film festival oh. called Nevertheless, um, which is fantastic and run by some amazing women there. Um, and I'm just really excited to like get to work on the next year and program at other festivals. Cool. Well, thanks so much for your time. It was a joy getting to know you over the last three days. It was a joy getting to know you. Both. I love your energy. Yeah, <laughs> We want you to come on just on your own and so we can sit down for like 40 minutes. Yeah, so definitely. we'll see you at Sundance, though. Yeah, sounds we'll like. see you at Sundance. Okay. We'll have a fun time there. Yeah. We can complain about things. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Farida. Yeah, thank, thank you. So we're still at Coven Film Festival, and uh, we've got to talk to a lot of um, wonderful women here at the film festival in San Francisco. Um, we do have a, um, a legend, if you will, an icon <laughs> of Hollywood. Uh, her name's Karen Allen. She's been in Raiders of the Lost Ark, Scrooge, Sandlot. More recently, you may have seen her on Blue Bloods. And, um, Blue Bloods. Was I? Was I did, you know oh, that? did I do a Blue Bloods? Did you not do a Blue Bloods? Oh, was maybe like 15 years ago or something. Oh, it was in the, I might have. It was in the Wikipedia. How, oh, really? Oh, it was on something. the internet, so oh, it has to be okay. true. <laughs> the point is she's done so much she can't even remember it all. <laughs> or I can't remember it all. Well, we can just scratch that. Fine. I made it up. Um, yeah, don't believe everything you read on the internet, no, I, I guess. No, I think I did. I, th I think I, I did. I think I did do one. I'll have to go back to IMD IMDb to look. But anyways, thank you so much for being on this podcast. And thank My you for being pleasure. at Kevin Film Festival. Thanks. My God. How did you get here? Well, Cameo and I met at the Cannes Film Festival about three or four years ago. That's very fancy. We both had short films okay. that we were showing there. 
and uh, we were hanging out in between our various and sundry little things that we were doing at the American Pavilion, and we ended up sitting at the same table and chatting, and then we just hit it off, and we, we hung out a lot together, and then it turned out on the circuit, on the short on the film festival circuit she and i ended up in another three or four film festivals together um <clears throat> and uh we just got to know each other and then it turns out as we were talking she grew up not very far away from where i have a house in massachusetts so i've seen her a few times there when she's come back to visit so we've we've become friends it's it was meant to be it was meant to be oh, so wow. she just invited me to come yeah. and i was um, I was just finished with a whole bunch of work I've been doing. And I, you know, after the Christmas holiday, I didn't have a lot planned. Mm-hmm. Although, as it's turned out, now I've gotten really, <laughs> bu- now I've gotten really busy. I mean, now like, you're doing panels and you're teaching <laughs> workshops. So, yeah, thank you yeah. for being here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would love to talk a little bit about uh, why you're here, which is your directorial debut. It's uh, A Tree, A Rock, A Cloud. Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your short and how you came up with the story and, and what your panel is going to be about a little later today? Uh, well, Cameo invited me to really talk about, uh, I, it's my debut as a film director, but I've been directing in the theater for maybe 15 years, and, and that's a, a big part of my life at this point. Um, So she was interested in me talking about having, uh, being an actor myself, what it was, you know, what what I find um, about, you know, what what I might be able to share with with young filmmakers uh, in terms of working with actors and how I go about casting actors, working with actors, both in the theater and in film projects, Um, which is an interesting topic. You know, I I feel like as an actor who's become a director, I'm in a a sort of very interesting position to be able to to choose actors because I have a a very specific point of view when I choose an actor. Um, I know how to read actors really well. And there's a certain type of actor that I'm drawn to. And there's certain types of actors that I'm not drawn to. So there are certain kinds of actors that are great for me to work with and other types of actors I should run in the opposite direction. <laughs> you don't have to name names, but... <laughs> I mean, it's called bitch talk, so... Can you talk a little bit about your short and, and the yes, process of it's, creating it's, it? You know, I had, a, I had a, a, a fairly strong resistance to the idea of directing a film only because I've been making films most of my life and I have zero naivete or innocence in terms of what it's like to make a film. Mm. Um, I've watched it from the inside for a very long time and I have been on sets with first-time film directors many, many, many times and seen that sort of deer-in-the-headlights look in their eye I've seen them cry I've seen them fall apart I've seen you name it I've seen it well it's a lot of pressure <laughs> and I never wanted to put myself into those <laughs> right. shoes yeah. I, I it, it didn't seem like a very enviable position to me mm. uh, I love directing in the theater but the theater is fairly simple in comparison you know you work with a, you work with your actors you work with a playwright and five four directors and a stage manager and that's it you know and that seems pretty manageable but you know to have a a a crew of 40 or 50 people working you know and you're the captain of that particular ship it's it's another level of uh managing all kinds of things Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i wasn't sure that i really wanted to do that plus I mean, just doing this short film, it, it took three years of my life. So that's a big commitment. Um, yes, it is. So I, I have a friend who's a producer who I had worked with. He produced a play I was in in New York, and he produced a play I directed in New York. And he kept saying to me, why aren't you directing film? Why aren't you directing mm. film? Why aren't you directing <laughs> film? And I kept saying, oh, that's, it's not for me. I don't, I don't want to do that. And then we started having a conversation and he would say, well, if you were going to do it, what would you do? And I said, 
if I were going to direct a film, which I'm not, <laughs> I would direct Carson McCullough's short story, A Tree, A Rock, A Cloud. Hmm. And uh, we started talking about it. And, you know, I said because I thought it was very much a perfect film for me because it's a, it's a story that I've known since I was 17 years old. Mm -hmm. I've been in love with for all those years. It's personal. I've read it maybe 40 or 50 times. I used to inflict it on people if they visited me. I would read it out loud to them if they told me they'd never read the story. Um, so it's, it's something I obviously have a very deep connection to. And it it's, was basically simple in the sense that it only really has three characters in it. It, for the most part, has one location, although I did manage to add several more. Um, but it, it's, it's a perfect film I, I never ever ever will understand I just have worked in the last 10 years with a lot of first time directors who choose features to direct before they've ever done a short and who choose <laughs> features to direct that have you know 82 locations and no wonder why they're crying <laughs> 24 <laughs> actors right and, and you just think really uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> really are you kidding me are you really going to try to make this work yeah. um you know and they get you know generally they get through it you know but um i don't know it's pretty stressful it's stressful to watch them and it's stressful to to be a part of it sometimes yeah um so uh, I thought, you know, if, if I were going to embark on something like directing a film, I wanted to do something that I, I felt I could succeed at that would be simple enough that with all the obvious complications, uh, you know, of, of, of preparation, raising money, working with an entire crew of people in all the different areas that you don't have to deal with in the theater. Mm -hmm. um, such as locations. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, I figured, I figured, anyway, he talked me into it. I'm going to blame him. <laughs> I was going to say, and that was a very specific answer also about what would you, if you were ever going to do it. That, I mean, so it was, maybe it was there a little bit. Well. In terms of what you wanted to I do mean, first. I mean, I think I had imagined, I had loved this story for a long time, and I, had always thought I might do something with it in the theater. Like I might do a, um, I might write it as a short play and pair it with another short play. And I did have, I'd had that idea for a long time and it, it hadn't never occurred to me that I might do it as a film. I just, every time it occurred to me, I would talk myself out of it. Mm. <laughs> We've been having that conversation a lot here, just yeah. FYI. Just like, no, I'm, eh, it's okay, I'm not going to do it. I'll just yeah. do it some other and time. And now I have people trying to talk me into doing a feature, which, um, you know, is, is based on a play that I've directed. And, um, and if we could make it come together, I might try to do it. But again, it's something I love. It's fairly... It's only got a couple of characters in it. Right. And um, written by a woman, three characters, two daughters and a mother are the main characters in it. And it, it takes place, for the most part, in, in one location. Although, you know, when you open it up to make it into a film, you, of course, have to expand your locations right. and fill in the blanks. Right. But I, we'll see. I, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the state of film today. And you talk about how you grew up in a different age of film and how important it is to elevate these independent films and, and make sure that they have that voice and that platform. So can you talk a little bit about how, you know, you go to Sundance every year, you go to all these festivals, and how important it is to support these independent films and, and make sure that there's more out there than just, you know, Marvel films and things like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, what I love so much is how prolific film festivals have become. I mean, there's, there's film festivals everywhere, and, and larger cities have so many. I mean, I, I've never counted, but I'm going to make a wild guess and say New York City might have as many as 20 film festivals. I could believe that. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many San Francisco has, but I we think quite a few. We have a good amount, few. yes. Um, yeah. And within the Bay Area, I yeah. mean, yeah. And I, and I think what has happened is that 
the festivals have blossomed in order to be able to give independent films a place to live, you know, a place to show themselves. Um, I see an awful lot of independent films and I see a lot of good ones and I see a lot of them that I see at a festival and then I never see it again. It just disappears into the ether and some of them are extraordinarily good, like way better than a lot of the things that are up on commercial screens. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and, I, and I feel like there is... There are truer voices in independent films. It's not, you know, film by committee. It's generally, generally you have uh, writer-directors, and generally you have, and when you have a writer-director, you have a voice. You have a, a person who's making a film about something they care about and something they know about. And, um, and generally there's not a lot of money you know, so you get actors who are passionate about doing the project, not about just doing another job where they're going to get a paycheck. So, and, and the same is true with the crews. I mean, there's not a lot of money to offer people. So what you have to offer them is quality work, you know, quality stories and things that they will do in spite of the fact that there's no money. So I think just, just based on that alone, the, the level of... Uh, uh, significance in the films is often much, much higher. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sad we're already at time. <laughs> we're actually over time. And there's about 10 minutes until your panel. So with that, I want to say thank you so much for being on Bitch Talk. We have so much more to talk to you about. But are you going to be at Sundance again this year? I'm not because I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a, I'm going to be doing a film in London. Okay. So I'm, well, that I'm sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's awful. It's horrible. Fine. Well, we'll catch up with you at a different film festival. But this has been such a pleasure. And anytime you're back in San Francisco, we'd love to have you in the studio. So oh, thank please. you so much. You can I, bitch all I you want. I was invited to come. They're, they're doing the, a film that I'm in that just got nominated for an indep uh, film, uh, Independent Spirit Award, oh. is showing here, and they want me to come. It was at, it, it was, it premiered at the San Francisco Film Festival in April, but they're bringing it back to the California Film Institute in oh, San, CFI. San, yeah. San Rafael, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 so it's there on February 3rd, and they, they want me to come, but I'm not sure I can come, so. Um, we'll keep tabs on you, though. Yeah. Maybe if yeah, you're yeah, here, yeah. we'd love to have you back. Thanks. thanks. Yeah, thank you, Karen. Okay, pleasure. was our interviews, well, our first part of interviews from the Coven Film Festival that happened just over the weekend with um, co-founders Connie Jo Seacrest, uh, Cameo Wood, and director of programming Farida Baramosi. Thank and you. And filmmaker and panel host and icon. all around Hollywood icon, Karen Allen. Yeah. This was a I really... I think Karen, I, we always say this, but we had a really good conversation with Karen and we saw her when we were leaving the after party and um, just had a really good conversation with her about the film that closed the, the film festival. And I just really like her. Well, and <laughs> she walks in, you know, because we were basically hanging chill. out in the VIP lounge the whole time. And she's so unassuming. And she sits down and she's engaged. Right. Like, she just, whoever she was sitting next to, just really engaged in conversation. So much to the fact that it was hard for us to get an interview in. Because we were like. Well, I had to run over yeah, and be like, hey, talking Karen, to people. hey, hey, hey. <laughs> But Please be just, on the podcast. I mean, while she was giving her uh, her panel talk, she was talking about working with Paul Newman and just all these names that you, you can't even comprehend being in their presence. But uh, she's she's just wonderful and really a Accessible. pleasure to, to speak with. And then she was like, so I'm going to be going to, um, where was she going? London and, and uh, uh, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka to, to film, film her next film. Which is why she won't be in Sundance, even though she goes every year. Right. So. And um, she has a film that's nominated for one of my favorite film festivals because, not film festivals, um, awards ceremonies because oh fuck God. the Academy. Because fuck the Academy Awards. <laughs> fuck them up the Seriously? ass. Seriously? And they can eat my shit. Seriously. Um, except thank you for nominating Jojo Rabbit and Parasite and Kitbull from Pixar. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've had the director from Kitbull on the uh, podcast from the Mill Valley Film Festival's Mind the Gap Summit. And um, I'm really excited for her. She's local. And if you can go find Kitbull on, I think it's on Disney Plus. And I think they're still on YouTube. It's a Pixar short. Go find it. 
But yeah. Uh, Independent Spirit Awards, Karen Allen. Thank you. Independent Spirit Awards, Karen <laughs> Allen. Went on a whole tangent. Um, one of her films is um, nominated at the Independent Spirit Awards, so good for Karen. Uh, we will be back tomorrow with interviews from uh, the filmmakers, some of the filmmakers from the Coven Film Festival. We couldn't talk to them all because there are a lot, um, but uh, the ones we spoke with, uh, it, they were films that really touched us one way or another. And please tune in because they, these aren't conversations where you have to have watched the films to no. partake. We really touch on a lot of topics, uh, wide ranging, uh, that are really timely and really personal and, and really just on mark with what we care about at Bitch Talk. So yep. we were yeah, really lucky to have. And by the way, women are making badass films. Did, you, did anyone know that? <laughs> uh, if you uh, look at the Academy nominations, you wouldn't think so. You wouldn't think any women but were making any films. Contrary to popular belief. Anyways. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. In the meantime, you can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com. You can find us every Monday morning on bff.fm from 6 to 6.30. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We are powered by GoTo Productions. Bitch, please. Bitch, please.